Hey, good morning and welcome to Breakthrough Walls. I'm Ken Walls and I'm your host and I am excited this morning. I have a friend of mine that we actually just met in real life for the first time in San Diego um, recently. And, you know, I just said, dude, you got to be on my show. So, hey, I want to welcome my buddy Charles Bird to the show. Charles, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Ken. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm excited to have you uh, have you here. Um, so I, I'm, I'm already seeing some comments, but so so let's let's um, you know I told you this show I created it. It's it's about helping people have a breakthrough in life. Like you know we all hit those those places in life where we get stuck. We don't know what to do. We don't, you know, I don't know if you've ever had it happen, but you're like, I'm not getting through this one, you know? So, um, you know, what are like, let's, let's start out with first where you were born and raised. Sure. So I was actually born in Louisville, Kentucky of all places. It's because I had a uncle who was a doctor and my family thought it would be a great idea to, um, have him help with bringing me into the world. Uh, so that's uh, that's where I was born, and then I lived actually at the time in Canada. So um, I grew up in Canada till the second grade in uh, a tiny town called Hope, BC, and then Abbotsford, BC. The claim to fame for Hope, BC is it was the the arches that say that were the opening scene in Rambo. <laughs> oh wow! Wow. Um, and then in the second grade, my parents split up and my mom moved to California and my dad moved to Toronto. And so, uh, I moved to central California in the second grade and, um, basically had a whole new life of skateboards and heading to the beach and California, um, fun. And, uh, I'd visit my dad in the summers in Toronto, and then eventually he moved to Southern California. So most of my growing up years were in uh, Southern California and Central. Wow! Now Central, I'm not, I'm not like what, what's Central California? Like where would oh, that be? Oh, glamorous places like Fresno, California. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, actually, we lived in these uh, tiny little towns called Reedley and Dinu. But the cool part there was lived out in the country on a lot of acreage in a orange grove and uh, to the directly behind the house were foothills heading up into the uh, redwoods. So uh, a lot of fun for mountain biking and hiking and doing all kinds of things you do in the country, riding motorcycles and stuff like that. And then um, also going down to Southern California with my dad, um, which was great as well, because uh, then there's bodyboarding and surfing and hitting skate parks which as a kid and to this day i like doing <laughs> wow really so you can you still skateboard i posted a video last night in napa um skateboarding with my kids on uh, electric vehicles <laughs> oh my gosh that's awesome that's awesome like the casey neistat electric the Yep, exactly. I've wow. got uh, an electric boosted board. I have uh, a one wheel, which is that big yeah. flat wheel in the middle, which that thing is a blast. Is um, it? I've seen those. They look cool. I'm telling you, it's like a powder day everywhere you go. I, I actually, um, yesterday I was doing video introductions for some friends yeah. and I was like just riding that around and I figured out I could actually do a, a fair amount of work <laughs> riding that because... <laughs> I do so many video intros and voice recorded messages to people that yeah. uh, turns out you can have a lot of fun while you're working. <laughs> That's awesome, man. So, so you went, so you, you grew up primarily in California um, and you said you were born in Louisville, Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah. <laughs> Over here, we call it Louisville. <laughs> Aha. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I see. There's Angela Brooks is in Kentucky. She's she may she may confirm that. I'm not sure. But um, so so you you uh, you grew up in California. Um, and I mean, 
did you went to high school? Did you go to college? Oh yeah. So I went to high school in Southern California, went to La Sierra University down there and then went to school in England for a year, about an hour outside of London. Wow. Um, which that was, that was really cool. A lot of the people at that school were from the U S and other countries. So it was a super tight knit group because we basically had each other. Like, um, it's not like people could just go home and like disconnect. Uh, so we, we had a, a ton of fun there riding the lines in Trafalgar square and doing all kinds of, uh, fun adventures. Like for art history classes, we'd study on Tuesday in the book and then ride the train to London and go see the art in the museums on Thursday. So it was, uh, <clears throat> that part was pretty cool. Um, wow. and so I lived there for a year and at the time my brother was finishing school in Northern California above Napa in a little town called St. Helena, kind of full on wine country. Um, so I came up to meet him there in approximately 95 and figured out Northern California is by far my favorite part of California. San Diego's excluded. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, uh, <laughs> that's beautiful down there, man. Jeez. <laughs> Other than that, yeah, I've loved it up here. <clears throat> went to college, got a business degree in technology, um, went out and uh, at the time going through business school, I swear to God, no one really pro proclaimed you could go out and be an entrepreneur. Of course you heard the term, but yeah. the path was you go to school, you get a job. Right. And so it never actually dawned on me that I could be an entrepreneur. It it uh, it took many years for that to come to be a realization in my head, and I'll be happy to tell you about that too. But um, got a job for a big software company, um, and worked my way up through the help desk, doing tech support, um, then project management, program management, ultimately founding my own social media and collaboration department at a six thousand person enterprise. Wow. Um, billion dollar software company in the Silicon Valley. And that was, uh, I worked in it. I, uh, was, I'll, I'll say smart enough to get them to pay for my master's degree. Um, <laughs> but I was in it. So it is boring. Uh, so I wanted to make that a lot more fun. I created something called it TV producing, um, interviews and amusing commercials that were played across the enterprise for, company-wide comms meetings and they were for the projects that I was rolling out. Um, like I rolled out WebEx across a 6,000 person enterprise with an international team and then wow. created the marketing assets to, um, communicate that, um, manage the changes in the organization and then train the entire company. Um, and so that was cool until there was a management takeover as happens in corporate. Yeah. And, um, I pioneered the work from home program, uh, which was pretty awesome because I worked from home a lot of the time, go down to the Silicon Valley. It, it would depend, but once a month, twice a month, sometimes twice a week, it, it would vary. But the new management said, we, we need you here five days a week. And I went down three days in a row, which is about, if there's no traffic, it's still an hour and 20 plus minutes. And with wow. traffic, it can be three hours. And so three days of that, I said, you know what? I'll take door number two, which doesn't involve me working for you. Um, <laughs> right. So I uh, <clears throat> collected a fat severance after 15 years of giving them uh, quality work. And I knew I wanted to be... Um, an entrepreneur, but I didn't really have a framework to do that within. And I, I had a couple friends, well, one friend in particular from college that married this uh, very brilliant woman and they started a wooden sunglasses company. And it was the first time I realized, um, just seeing them go through that process, like they're carving wooden sunglasses out of water cannons and crazy stuff like that. And and then they're assembling these things in their backyard at parties and stuff. And wow. uh, next thing you know, two or three years go by and they're doing a few million. 
And I'm like, wait a minute, you mean my peer group can uh, create their own business and work for themselves and just forge their own path? That No one told me, I did not get the memo. Um, you know, what's weird is, uh, I, I, and you bring up a really good point, but back, I mean, I, I think we're, I think it sounds like we're fairly close in age. I might have a few years on you, but, um, you know, I, I, when Andy Frisella was on my show, we were talking about this cause he's probably in around our age too. And he, we were it, back then, like you didn't, the word entrepreneur did, I mean, it, you Nobody said that at word ever. What, right? Did you ever hear it? Well, I certainly heard the word, but it was never in the context of something you could go do. Right. Right. So we weren't raised like, I mean, I, I, we weren't brought up in a generation where it was like, hey, everybody go out and start your own gig, man. Like that wasn't no, the deal. It was go to school, get a job. Get a job. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you saw, you saw evidence right? That Tony Robbins talks about that. You have the evidence, the legs of evidence on the table, but you saw evidence of other people like going, you know what? Screw this. I'm going to just do my own thing. Yeah. And the, 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 I guess hook for me was this was my peer group. Yeah. But this wasn't someone else that you read in a book. I mean, we all saw the books of entrepreneurs that was for other people. Right. Um, so when I was like, wait, uh, I've hung out with with my friends. We're pretty, uh, I guess, normalized in brain power and uh, ability. Um, yeah. If they can do it, I can do it. Wow! So, so you um, you ventured out. You got a severance. Which, gosh, I've I've never like I, my entire adult life for the most part. I've been an, an entrepreneur. I just started calling myself that like six months ago. Um, <laughs> but I've just been a guy that works my ass off trying to make it. But like you, you, um, so you, you started your own thing. You, you just said, I'm, I'm, I'm done and got a severance. I never got a severance, but yeah, it was a pretty nice one too. Um, in fact, like the whole first year I was off for when we were doing a huge remodel on our house which took my time uh, babysitting adults, <clears throat> um, contractors. Yeah. In any case, I, I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. And I actually met with my friends who are creating the wooden products and watches and stuff. I'm like, guys, I want in. Tell me what to do. And they're yeah. like, they, they actually said, you should do digital products. There's no shipping, sourcing, overhead, right. any of that. And... <clears throat> We were in San Francisco at lunch and they uh, expressed this to me and a, a light bulb went off over my head. I'm like, wait a minute. I've already been producing trainings and right. like online is fine with me. So all of a sudden I was like, wow, I actually have 80% of these skills now. Maybe point being, I knew how to create trainings and I knew how to produce videos and, and things like that. I didn't really know anything about copywriting or strategy i certainly didn't know anything about real marketing right um and so that's when i i decided i wanted to create an online program uh and i narrowed that list down just by i wrote down a list of like 40 things i could create a training on and then i asked myself what are you actually really good at um and that list narrowed down to like 12 things and then I just asked myself, what's been one of the most useful tools to me that I can simplify for other people? And uh, at that time, I chose creating a course teaching entrepreneurs and professionals how to apply Evernote to their business and their life. So <clears throat> I created this course teaching uh, Evernote. I was asked to speak at a real estate conference and uh, created my presentation for that. I had an outline for the course, but the course was not created. Um, and basically from the stage, I sold uh, seats into this course. And wow. It, yeah. So it was for, first... for, for wait, 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 for Evernote, the, the, the app. Yes. You're an Evernote specialist. I'm yeah. I'm expert. Ultimately I'm now certified by them. They've asked me to, come do Facebook lives from their campus. I've met their CEO multiple times. They've 
They've asked me to start doing monthly trainings for their audience. Really? Yeah. Is Evernote that good? Uh, the way I teach it, it is. <laughs> I need to sign up for your course, dude. So oh, well, I'll tell you the promise of that course in brief. Uh, spend three hours in that course. You will save three hours a week going forward, which adds up to 144 hours a year or 18 working days of reclaimed time. Wow. Yeah, that, that sounds powerful. So you became a, a the an Evernote expert. Um, sounds like possibly one of the global experts. For well, Evernote. let's put it this way. Uh, a couple months ago, I got a referral from inside of Evernote to consult one of Evernote's board members on how to apply it in his business. <laughs> Seriously. Wow. Yes. That's, that's powerful. So you, um, so, so now what year was this that you, you said, I'm, I'm out of yeah, corporate? Um, well, the, the decision to create a business, I think was five years ago. And by the time I figured out what I actually wanted to do, it was around four years ago. Um, wow. So I created that course, <clears throat> but I didn't know how to market it. Right. And right. so I, um, I started buying programs. I think Jeff Walker's was the first I bought, which was great. And then, you know, yeah. other people launch, are, <clears throat> other people are introduced into the mix and you're like, oh, I'll buy that and, and we'll make this. And I thought I'd make this hybrid of all these people's amazing systems. Right. As it turns out, that doesn't work at all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no. you, need, uh, you need a foundational strategy is what right. I call it. And for my, for me, uh, it was joint ventures and to, give a little background on that side of it, which is now the specialty that I'm, I'm known for and help people with their sales flows, their, their joint venture relationships and so forth. But like I just started this company, I had the course <clears throat> ready to go. And uh, I went to an event uh, a friend of mine was doing at the time, it was just someone I'd bought his program, uh, my friend Danny Inney. And I, I met with him and our next call we met in person in Austin. And then our next call, he asked if I'd book all of his joint venture partnerships. And I'm like, what? Wow. Like, um, I've never done that, but, uh, what's that? I mean? what, said no, what, actually. What, what's, what's that entail? What's that mean? What does that mean? Sure. So it means, uh, connecting with influencers or people who already have your ideal audience as their audience. Uh, so um, I'll give you the perfect example, which is one of my own. It's uh, Brian Tracy has a huge audience in the business productivity and sales spaces, right? Yep. Um, my trainings, I have multiple uh, courses. They're perfect fit for his audience. So he's had me present to his audience at least five times where he'll mail his whole list, inviting them to one of my trainings on joint ventures or productivity. Um, the people that opt in to the free training, which is a high value training, um, teaching some of my systems. Uh, then at the end, I offer a deep dive course. Whoever buys that, we share the revenue. Got um, it. So it's basically a five day promotion window where a partner mails a couple times to get people on a live training. Yeah. I deliver that training, offer the course, we share the revenue. And this is a very fast way to grow an email list. A lot of people in the online space, they know they need a list. And, and even people who consult other people all day on this end up not really having a list or a big one. Um, and doing joint ventures, relationship building, connecting, finding win-wins so both partners feel they're actually getting the better end of the deal. Yeah. And, and what I really teach is value first relationship building it's connecting with others, listening to what their goals are, and finding ways to get them there faster. And that's uh, frequently done through intros and so forth. Anyway, Danny uh, asked me to help him with his JVs. I said yes. So that's when I learned how they work. And then I took my IT and systems background, researched the best tools in the industry to create the most integrated, simplified workflow for relationship building and lead tracking so no lead is left behind and you can seal the deal with direct sales, with joint ventures. Uh, I, I really honed that in and I booked two to six joint venture promotions per week. Wow. 
holy crap man <laughs> that's insane so um and i love brian tracy i'm i'm connected i'm connected with him on linkedin he's a great man he 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 that's him and zig ziglar brought me up in in sales so um yes. yeah he, his he has i have two of his courses the psychology of success and the psychology of selling amazing stuff but anyway so um so you've done some really cool stuff man and that's and this is in four years yeah in fact uh just this night before last i flew in i'll, I'll mention this part just because it's fun i flew in back home on a private jet it was priced very affordably trust me um and it that concluded um 11 cities over 12 weeks speaking at places wow. like digital marketer at their headquarters where you and i met yeah at the broadcast your authority summit i was a panelist there yeah i uh, went over uh presented at digital marketer which was streamed to all their agency owners and had a, a whole in-room audience uh then went straight from there to alex mendozian's mastermind with joe polish then went to orlando to speak twice on guerrilla marketing stage for their three-day event then wow. went to LaunchCon, uh, just got back from uh, another weekend at Marisa Murgatroyd's house. She did a, a wonderful workshop on product experience masterclass. But in any case, um, this, uh, this way of being, um, being a human lead magnet, a yeah. walking, talking human lead magnet, it's connecting with other people, listening to what they're trying to do and finding ways to speed that up. In fact, most of the big players who promoted me originally did so before I ever promoted them, which wow. it doesn't work that way in this industry, but, or any industry, <laughs> but the thing <laughs> is, um, I found other ways to provide them value, which, uh, one of the easiest ways ever is providing introductions to people. So I'll give you an example. Let's say you meet someone at an event or, you jump on a, a Zoom or Skype call or something, and you're like, you know, what are you up to that has you excited? What are you, what are you uh, focused on? And they'll tell you. So they might say, oh, we're launching this new product. We have a, a launch coming up. Oh, well, actually, I'll give you a, <laughs> a great example. I ran into Eben Pagan out in the Nevada desert, and we had a, a brief interaction there and scheduled a 15-minute follow-up call. Mm -hmm. uh, we had our 15 minute follow-up call that ended 50 plus minutes later. And he's like, you know, the next meeting, I want you and the whole team there. So we met again with the whole team wow. and they were heading straight into a big launch. So I, I gave them uh, six or seven very high level intros to people outside of their network to support this launch, which means, uh, I mean, we'll see what the performance was. The launch just wrapped up, but there's a great chance that I added at least 200,000 to uh, half a million plus dollars to their launch because I hooked them up with introductions. Um, and so it's, again, listening to what people want. Maybe someone's saying, uh, we're redoing our website and uh, our copywriter just left for a, a month long trip to Paris or something. Right, and, right. And we're, we need a copywriter. Well, chances are you know a few copywriters that you could um, connect those to. And yeah. so when you're handpicking intros that are a win for both parties, you're connecting the dots for other people. Right. Um, both parties are really happy about the opportunity you saw and then created for them. Yep. And uh, that means later when you're doing something, they're going to be far more interested in supporting you um, another trick to that whole process is when people come to mind, um, ping them. I did an interview with Jordan Harbinger on my show and, uh, he, he has a quote I, I, um, I like it's dig the well before you're thirsty, give without expectation and don't keep score and dig the well before you're thirsty. What that, <clears throat> that means is if you and I are in touch, Ken, throughout, you know, the next year and we're you know, sharing stuff we know the other person's going to be interested in or lining up intros to, um, like the event you and I were at, there's a yeah. gentleman there named Omar and we were chatting afterward and he's like, I've always wanted to interview David Allen. I'm like, 
well, cool. I'll email them. And I lined up an interview for them. Wow. Um, That's so cool. And, so, I, and I, I was just with Sean Cannell over the weekend. Oh, really? Yeah. In Vegas. I, I love that dude, man. And we, you know, he, you saw him speak too. He's dynamic. He's incredible. Uh, yeah. He, he runs a room. Uh, he's, he's very dynamic. Um, yeah. Yeah. In fact, uh, I am overdue for a follow-up chat with him, but yeah. my, my point is it's like, in fact, even with Sean, I'm like, you guys are looking to scale what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, I can certainly help you do that because, uh, it's what I do all day is, right. is get the right people together to line up really cool deals and teach them and their teams how to generate those themselves systematically. I call it the system that makes success inevitable. Love it, man. And you uh, now, do you have a course on that or that's just something you do? I do have a course on that. I also have a live event um, on sure. that. And yeah. uh, so, <clears throat> Uh, to give a tiny bit of backstory on the event, which started, uh, I think, three years ago, um, people kept pestering me, asking how I booked two to six joint venture webinars for my my course, uh, my courses. And um, I was getting Facebook messages and emails and texts and calls and people at Masterminds asking me to present on it. And I, I was at a Mastermind at a friend's uh, up in Aspen, and we'd been sipping some whiskey and I'd been <laughs> literally pinged about 10 times that day on the topic. And I'm like, fine, if everyone wants this so bad, I'll make a live event teaching it. And it, um, since I'd never done events before, I scheduled it for two months later, which isn't a ton of lead up. Um, right. And uh, we filled it and it was a 5K event uh, in the presidential suite of the Manchester Grand Hyatt in San Diego. Jeez. And, um, and I designed it for people that were newer than me to shortcut all that time to figure out a path to get continuous leads, yep. pre-qualified leads that are good to go because they're coming in from warm audiences. Um, and what I found is it actually attracted a lot of heavyweights doing millions in JVs, but they were managing them in a, a pretty old school way through spreadsheets. Um, that I, I kind of see two sides to this business. There's things like Active Campaign and Infusionsoft and your main list stuff. But right. then there's the high touch, connecting with your friends and peers and partners. Those need to be tracked at a lot different level in, in a lot more personal way. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, at this point, people like David Gonzalez, who's a good friend of mine, he sent his whole team through my programs. He's spoken at multiple of my events. Mike Phil same spoke at uh, multiple of my events and they love it. So the event is called Pure JV. Uh, the next one is coming up March 28 through 30 in sunny San Diego in a gorgeous mansion that we used last time as well. Wow. And yeah. Um, we have uh, guests that are um, on cue to present. Uh, it's looking really solid for Alex Mendozian to be there. Uh, Marisa Murgatroyd is wow. coming. Um, we also have Zach Benson uh, will be there who I had breakfast with in Napa last week. Zach is awesome, man. Zach yeah, awesome. Um, we've, we've had uh, some phenomenal speakers and guests. It's a very high level group. And then the latest rendition of that for one, we shot all those events and turned that into a digital on-demand course called pure JV. Yeah. And, um, and I also wanted a higher touch experience related to application. Cause you can learn all this cool stuff. If you're not applying it, it never does you any good. Um, so to apply it, I created something, called the Pure Implementation Mastery Program, and it's a two-month group program walking people through getting their systems in place, learning how to connect with uh, people who have their ideal audience or influencers online and offline, yep. um, and uh, how to systematically follow up, no lead left behind. Um, and so that requires having systems you trust and how to seal the deal, whether their direct sales, group program sales, joint ventures, stages, interviews. It it all has to do with like you and I met. Yeah. We got each other's info and we followed up. If we didn't follow up, 
uh, I wouldn't be here and you wouldn't be interviewing. <laughs> like, that, that's true. It's yeah. true. I, I and so that's that's interesting. That I I literally was on the phone last night until around midnight with a, a client of mine um, in Dallas, and we were having this almost exact conversation about. And he owns a humongous company, national company, and and I and we were talking about doing some mastermind stuff and. Um, he invited me to speak to his thousands of, of people in his, his company. And, and, and so, you know, but we were talking about the offline versus online, right? Like, and I said, you know, cause AI is becoming, I was just at a conference about AI and, you know, it's becoming a really big thing, but I don't think from a marketing perspective and just a human perspective, I don't think that you're ever going to replace that face-to-face -face interaction. Uh -huh. You can't like automate love. <laughs> you can't automate, you know what I mean? Like you can't, that, that can't be automated. Yeah. There's nothing better than in person. It's one of the reasons I love going to events so much is uh, connecting with people and, when you're spending two or three days with them, you really get to know them. Right. And I, I have great friends that I've never met in person that call me from all around the world for, oh, I'm riding a motorcycle across, uh, you know, Vietnam right now. And then heading to do this, I'm going to interview a king, like crazy stuff. Yeah. And yeah. I've never met, uh, uh, this is my friend Joss. I've never met him in person. We talk every week or two, but in person you you can develop a lot deeper relationships in fact last week i had my wall-to-wall -wall meetings as as i do unless i protect the the calendar and i noticed two of the people on the same day um i'd met at the same event uh the first event i ever went to and i'm still in touch with both of those folks and i happened to be talking to two of them on the same day and that event had like 12 people in it so yeah in person, you can truly develop lifelong relationships where you're in each other's corner, you're creating referral partnerships, you're like uh, sharing business challenges. So you're not alone working in isolation. That that was another part of the, the problem. When I left corporate, wall-to-wall -wall meetings, nonstop phone ringing to silence. When right. I left corporate, I'm by myself sitting here going, now what? Okay. <laughs> um, now what? Like, uh, right. it, it was a very isolating, weird feeling. And, um, yeah. when I decided to commit to the business and figure that out, I had this piece of wood made. I can, I will end of story, but Love that. you can't do this stuff in isolation. I have a relative who wanted to start up a business. And so he, he had some brilliant tech ideas and didn't want to tell anyone about it because someone might, you know, run out and steal it. Of course, they wouldn't. But um, right. So he tried to do it in isolation. You, you can't. It, it, right. It's impossible. So surrounding yourself with brilliant people doing uh, amazing things that are ahead of you on the journey who are stretching your brain as to what you believe is possible um, and then consistently executing, um, you end up with this network of people who have your back, you can bounce things off, they can guide you, um, yeah. always being open to feedback so we can iteratively and consistently improve and just magical things can come out of that. So have you, as as an entrepreneur, um, I mean, so, so, so far it sounds like you've never really had any challenges. <laughs> <laughs> So, and I know that's no, there's no way that's true. You, you, you couldn't be alive and not have challenges, but like how uh, on the entrepreneurial journey, have you ever reached that point where um, I'll give you an example. I'll, I'll be transparent. Um, you know, I had a bunch of employees and, and one day an employee walks in and goes, uh, there's some dude looking in the windows of your SUV in the parking lot. And I'm like, 
well, tell him to get the hell out of here. What, what, what are you telling me for? And this is a big dude telling me. And, and, and he goes, no, no, he's, he's got it blocked with a tow truck. <laughs> and I'm like, why? He's like, I don't know. And I, so I go out there. He's there to repo my vehicle in front of all my employees, right? They're all getting paid, but I wasn't. So have, have you ever been in a position where you're like, crap, this isn't working. And what am I going to do? And we, we can't pay the bills or things. Are, have you ever been? Oh, dude. Um, so I was at this workshop at Maurice and Murgatroyd's house in um, just the last two and a half days. And um, that was one of the uh, origin stories that, that um, I wrote down. It's like I'm paying my team. I'm paying... Uh, you know, an assistant yeah. and, and I found they were getting paid more than me. I, I partially did this on purpose, but it, it certainly hasn't been easy. I wanted to scale the business quickly and knew I needed a team to do it. But, um, for months and months and months and months, the team made more than I did because right. only a certain amount of money was coming in. And, um, and here was the other challenge that, that I'd been warned about from the beginning, but it just took a while to sink in, I guess. I didn't have a back-end offer to my low-ticket entry point product. And mm. I, I was so good at boi booking joint ventures that we were making a lot of sales on the front, but there was no continuity and no path to uh, higher ticket offerings. And so I had my team up to five people and I was basically not only were they making more than me, I was going into debt to do it. Right. Um, and that's not a sustainable uh, path. And that brings all kinds of stress too, because then you're like, all right, we've got this plan, but damn thing better work. <laughs> right. That's right. 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 Um, so you, you've hit those challenges. What do you think? What do you think? Um, I'm sure you've had lots of conversations with people that are like, yeah, I've got this job. I really want to do this other thing. Um, but man, I got the house and the kids and the cars and the, For sure. and, and you know, how in the heck, I mean, what, what do you think keeps most people stuck there where they, they just have a, they're not pursuing what they really truly are passionate I, about. I, it makes me so sad to yeah. watch that happen. And there's a few factors. So there's probably thousands of them, but a few sure. that I'll, I'll point out for one, it's scary. It, it was oh, absolutely yeah. scary to just say this. This is why I brought this up. This is a line in the sand. This right. was my commitment to myself that instead of talking about it and playing around and working on this on the weekend, like, no, I am right. effing doing it. Right. I am right. committing to this. Right. And I don't care if the outcome's bad. I'm going to do it because I refuse to be um, on my 95 year old deathbed going, why didn't I do it? Well, I could have. Right. Um, am I going to wait? I, in fact, I had a lot of pressure from um, uh, family, not in my house family, but family, family go back, get a job, you need security. Yep. Um, and why don't you just build up to retirement and then do it? And I'm like, what, I, I go live my dreams when I'm 65? Like, screw that. Right. Um, so I, uh, I went and do those And do those people know you flew in on a private jet last night? Oh, believe me, I sent them pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that, yeah, dude. I'll, uh, I'll actually pull one up. Um, and, uh, I mean, the truth is they've always been supportive, but yeah. not always in alignment on how that would, uh, how that would come about if, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. so here we go. There's, uh, there's one of the shots. Dude, that's awesome, man. Um, so again, I, I had that support, but we're getting back to your question. It's drawing the line in the sand and committing. Now, what are the elements that make that possible? One, uh, a belief in yourself and willing to take a risk Two, it takes having, um, people around you that are supportive. I, I know a guy that 
hid the fact he had a podcast from his wife for three years because she wasn't supportive. That's stupid. Um, my, <laughs> my wife, from the beginning, I'm like, I want to do this. And her answer was, go do it. And yeah. that's been her her um, that's been her tone the entire time. Go for it. Yeah. And I'll tell you, like wh another friend of mine, he worked in corporate for a long time, desperately hated it. It was in an industry that isn't particularly socially popular either. Right. So he carried that around with him. And then <clears throat> um, he was like, I'm going to do these international adventure trips. And I'm like hell yeah. And then I introduced him to Scott Olford. I'm like, why don't you buddy up with someone doing these high ticket masterminds and do them in, in crazy locations? Like it was forming to be just badass. Um, yeah. but he had a baby on the way, um, had moved out of the state pursuing, a, a job opportunity. And then basically I think pressures from in the house, like we need stability took that balloon and, and popped it. And, uh, you know, you, we can't fix all the problems or, or uh, mindsets in people's homes, but um, realizing that if you don't do it while you can, I mean, truly, what's the worst that's gonna happen? You lose some money, right? maybe lose some retirement. Is that great? No, but you can't break through um, like when you work for corporate, you can make good money, obviously, but there's a ceiling when you work for yourself, it's limitless. The top is absolutely limitless. And I'll mention, even if I made less money than in corporate, the rest of my life, I would do it in a heartbeat. My quality of life is ridiculous. Uh, and what I mean is I'm hanging out with these brilliant people changing the world. Um, big influencers that their ideas shape millions of people's uh, perspective. You can make such a bigger, more positive impact. Plus, I mean, really, I'm, I'm waking up in Aspen, in Banff, in Toronto, um, in New right. York, in San Francisco, San Diego, surrounded by any city I walk in. I have friends there already. Right. I, can make, I made a post that I was going to London and eight people wanted to meet me when I got there. Right. Um, it, the quality of life is stupidly better. Uh, and, and it's all because you said, I'm, I'm not, I'm not living in, in this corporate America BS anymore. I'm out. I'm and, not going to be, um, yeah. I mean, when you work in corporate, you, you wear golden handcuffs and in general, you're just a little pawn. They don't I mean, it, shit it, about you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I mean, it's it's like it's the it's saying if you're not pursuing your dreams, you're pursuing someone else's, and and you know, like for me, I'm not. I I mean, I've said this a million times. I am unemployable. Like I, you can't. I, I'm not employable. Like I can't work for. I just I've tried. It doesn't work. So right. Yeah, I think I think you know I was having a, a chat with a friend of mine over the weekend and he's working for, for someone else. And the thing is, it can be a wonderful stepping stone. It's not, it doesn't have to be a destination. If, I mean, we all have bills to pay. You can't just uh, yeah. hope, hope this stuff into existence, but right, right. you can have a plan around it. I will do X for this long to get this amount of resources to then do what I'm really trying to do. So right. it's fine to design a path, but don't right. get stuck in it. A lot of people just, permanently get stuck there and they, they never snap out. And not everyone was meant to be an entrepreneur. Anyone right. can be an entrepreneur. But, yeah. I mean, it, it's not to say everyone needs to be like us, but I, I can say for those that are interested, oh my God, it's a way better way of existing. If you make money. If, <laughs> if you're not making money, it sucks. <laughs> Good point. So that's another reason why... Um, continuously learning, adapting, taking feedback yep. and executing talk is nothing. It's the execution. Even if you're executing a path that isn't perfect, uh, it will win every time over talking and, and not executing. That's so true, man. So true. I have that Theodore Roosevelt 
thing somewhere in my office. I don't know where, but um, about the man in the ring that's that's you know marred with blood and sweat and tears and you know I mean we've all if you're an entrepreneur or you own a business you've hit those things man where you just get there and you're like we're we're not surviving this like this this is bad yeah, <laughs> right it can be it can be hard especially in the beginning when you don't have a I mean yeah. I truly started with zero audience. Yeah. No one knew me at all. Right. I mean, right. they'd have no reason to. Right. Um, so when you're starting from there, that that's daunting. You're like, okay, hey, what am I really going to do? How, how do I get traction? And that's, that's why one of the reasons I created the Pure Implementation Program and the Pure JV um, yeah. courses is because there's so many ways to generate leads that we don't have to be dependent on one thing. It's It's conversations with people. It's connecting on... Uh, LinkedIn or Messenger. It's um, um, presenting to someone's small group, uh, and and you take any little win, and you roll that into the next one. So, like right. one of the one of the first webinars I did, um, <clears throat> when I talked to the next people about doing webinars, I mentioned the one I just done. Like you take take any little win and you roll it into the next. Yeah. And it's, that's why stages breed more stages, joint ventures. Uh, every JVI book leads to two or three more because uh, yeah. it's systematically baked into the process. And, and even if you don't have a course or anything like that, which is fine, uh, just direct outreach, following up, listening to what people are trying to do and a guide them to someone who can help them or B you'll hear that they're your ideal client and you can, start helping them getting um, real market feedback from things people find valuable from you, what problems you're solving for them, and uh, getting testimonials, case studies, and um, it's a wonderful platform to start building w without any fancy funnels or anything. You can do this with your Facebook or LinkedIn Messenger, just start connecting with people and uh, figure out ways you can provide value in the world. And that's that I want that's a valid point. And I wanna <clears throat> I want I wanna, you know, I, I did a live stream yesterday. I got back from this this speaking thing that I did over the weekend and I had a a few people hit me up yesterday trying to sell me stuff. And I don't I don't know them. One guy wanted me to invest in something overseas. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, dude, are you really hitting me up in Messenger and I don't even know you? And it sounds like you want uh, at least six figures. And what? Like, where are you? Where are you learning how to do this? That's insane. Dude, I'm telling you, I there's this guy who's uh, almost bought my program like three times. Yeah. And and then I, I didn't hear from him for six months. And yesterday he sends me this thing. I've got this program. Will you promote it? And I'm like, dude, this is exactly why you should have bought my program. Cause you'd know that that's the dumbest way ever to approach someone. Absolutely. It's, it is man. So no, um, it, I, it, I don't know what our video qualities are. The internet's having a, a little hiccup right there. It is. I think it's back. Um, but the, you know, I, I did a live stream talking about that cause I have a course too, that, that it's like, you know, and, and that's the thing, man, people are doing, it almost seems desperate. Well, it's just like I said, dig the well before you're thirsty, right? There was no well digging. And then the first thing he sends me is asking for a favor. It's like, dude, hell no, that's not how this works. <laughs> It's uh, I'm telling you, man. So l let me ask you this. I ask every guest this question. I want to ask you this. Um, and, and I don't know if you've ever been here. I can tell you that I have been here many, many times um, personally. And that is a guy calls you up and he says, dude, well, I'm going to embellish it a little bit, but it says, dude, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, things are bad. I can't, um, like they're shutting the electric off tomorrow. I'm late on my mortgage. They're foreclosing. I'm getting evicted. I'm losing my car. I'm everything's gone bad. I don't know what to do. Um, I, I, you know, what do you say to that person that's 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 really going through a super tough time and they can't figure it out? What do you say to them to, you know, because look, if you say to somebody that has 
you know, $30 to their name, buy my course. Well, they're going to hate you. <laughs> like, right. So what do you say to that person that's, that's really down? Like, Hey man, you know, what do you say? Well, I mean, for one, you need a healthy dose of, of empathy because, um, frequently people getting in situations that are pretty tough. Um, there's some outside forces involved that are outside of their control. Many times they're a reflection of their own decisions. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, just realizing being very empathetic is, is pretty key. I've, I've, uh, been in very stressful situations before. And then I also, beyond just being there for, for someone to hear what they're going through and, and provide some perspective, um, up front, then the next step is providing them a framework for getting, um, kind of immediate or near term control. And that involves reflecting back on fundamentals, um, getting enough sleep, exercising and eating right. I know that sounds boring, but the fact is when you're stress and cortisol is through the roof you can't even think you're stuck in those mind loops that you're trapped in and your anxieties palpable yeah. um to break free from that you do have to focus on those fundamentals you do need to get out and run or swim or whatever it is you do bike um because that's what starts dissipating that right and then um get back control of sleep because you, 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 I'm sure, uh, have experienced, uh, problems that feel very, very stressful, um, when you haven't had enough sleep versus the same problem the next morning, you're like, oh, well we can do this about it. And it, right. uh, when we have those fundamentals covered, everything starts getting a little more in perspective and, and that can take, I did a video about this a month or two ago, uh, you could be riding on cloud nine. You can fall off that cloud in, in a day. And yep. if things are completely out of whack, um, it can, you can be back, back to normal within a, a day to a week. And depending of course on what the, the root cause is, but you will get back to a, a normal place. And then the next thing is look at the framework, uh, you've created for yourself are you in a positive environment or a negative one do you have people dragging you down all the time if so renegotiate how those relationships work or end them yeah um, and start building a path to uh, a brighter more successful future surrounding yourself with people already doing the things you want you've heard it probably a million times you're the average of the five people you hang out with the most so hang out with people um, thinking bigger and doing bigger things and, and then find a, an income source for the short term. Um, anyway, you, you just start giving them a framework for, for, um, breaking out of that. And it really does require them to be open to hearing it. I, I have, uh, uh, people in my life that refuse help no matter how desperate their situation. And, um, after the hundreds time of, uh, attempting to help them. I'm like, I'm done even offering because if, right. if, if people won't accept the help, it's basically like this. If people listen and act on it, continue to spend time and nurture and mentor them. If other people, you give the same input, you're there for them and they continually just never do it. Stop wasting your time. <laughs> I, I, to I totally agree with you, man. Totally agree. I think that um, you've got a lot of um, you're dude. You're smart. <laughs> like you, you got a lot. You got a lot of wisdom. I love. No, I love that man. I, I, you know, like the whole Evernote thing. Like, I, I think I tried Evernote. I mean, I use I, I use probably something that would be considered a competitor to it, but. Um, Maybe not. I don't know. Do, do, certainly uh, don't feel weird about it because that's basically everyone. That's why I came into yeah. that with a market. When I mentioned when I mentioned that to people at a conference or something, their eyes light up because they at least recognize a word in what I said. And yeah. then, then the next thing <laughs> yeah. out of their mouth is, oh, I have it, but I'm not really using it. Right. <laughs> right. Well, see, and that's something that like, 
you know, we, we, you and I talk about, I've got a, I've got a couple of courses that, that I, you know, have, have students on and you have courses and, and I, I, I talk to people about like, you know, anybody can like, I think there's value in every human on this planet. And, and I think that we all are sent here to do really incredible things, not just be a, a factory worker, maybe that's your, maybe, but I think that there's more for you. And I think that maybe you bake the best damn cake in the world and only your immediate family gets to enjoy that. Like, why not teach everybody else in a course or, or whatever? Like, it's not, yeah. you, you know, know what I mean? A workshop or something in your local yeah. area. Like it, some of the stuff, I mean, I, I like funnels and digital stuff, but yeah. you don't have to start there. Start just like this, doing yeah. a live stream video or, or whatever. Like people don't, they don't, they don't get it. They don't get like, And it, it kills me. I, I want, I like to see people win. Exactly. Yeah. You, you want to see those results. Um, you yeah. want to see them, uh, get, <laughs> Dude, that's awesome, man. By the way, I'll point out that airline, um, is equivalently priced to Southwest. What? Yep. Is it really? It is. I flew down to, uh, North Hollywood from 20 minutes from my house, uh, for 160 per direction. On a private jet. On a private jet. Shut yeah. up. So it was phenomenal. Like, um, what? Take, take an Uber down from uh, or Lyft from Marisa Murgatroyd's. Uh, I got to the airport um, nine minutes until the plane was taking off. And you just walk up. The guy's like, you must be Charles. Here's your thing. Board the aircraft. You didn't and, have to uh, go through TSA. None of that. None, none of that. Of that at wow. all and then um and then i landed and um it's the from where the jet landed to my car was the equivalent of three houses down of like <laughs> oh my God. you gotta crazy. be kidding me <laughs> dude that's crazy man and there is that just out there or are they they everywhere yeah it's uh well this this company is called jet sweet x and they are servicing um Oakland, Concord, which is like where, toward where I live, um, yeah. Seattle, um, wow, John Wayne Airport by Newport Beach, uh, yeah. Phoenix. Um, so, in fact, I I have a friend who invited me to the French Laundry next month, and then I invited a few friends, and I'm like, okay, we're gonna go to the French Laundry in Yountville. Here's here's the link to book your private jet. I'll pick you up at the airport. <laughs> oh my god, that's awesome, dude. That's so awesome. Wow. Well, man, you are um and and I feel like there's just so much more knowledge that you have. Um I think that everybody watching, how how should they um follow you or connect with you? Where where would that be? Yeah, so my uh, website for my upcoming Pure JV event, it is purejv.com. There's a great video on that page for anyone interested in growing Whoa. your, your Pure, business. It's Pure JV. Purejv.com. P-U-R-E. Yep. J-V. J-V.com. Okay. Yeah. it's This is for, for people who have a product or service. They, they want to get it out or... I, my ideal client already has converting products or services, and they're just looking to scale that with joint ventures and multiple lead flow sources. Those are the people I can help the fastest uh, unequivocally. And it, it also really tightens down their, um, their integrated business systems, like how they're managing information between um, email, tasks, delegation. Um, and I've, I've helped an array of people get their systems dialed in, including uh, Joe Polish, um, having wow. a third meeting with Yannick Silver uh, coming up. Um, different different people like that that um, come in, help them with the infrastructure of how they manage information, the best yeah. practices of uh, tools, workflows, and habits. They all go together. Um, and then how to design win-win um, opportunities, joint ventures or other things like that, that 
help you scale, how, how to follow up with the people you met at that last conference, no lead left behind, to systematically wow. build those relationships, find ways to help them, close direct sales, joint venture partnerships, stages, podcasts, and live stream with live streams with Ken. I mean, come on, it's the pinnacle. <laughs> Dude, you're awesome, man. Everybody and and follow you on Facebook, I assume you're on and Instagram and and everywhere. Yeah, Sean Sean uh Cannell was uh he was compliment shaming me into getting on Instagram. He's like, "Your videos and pictures are great. Why the hell aren't you on Instagram?" Oh, you're not on Instagram? <laughs> Well, I have one. I just, I need to start using it. I made a post. Yeah. I made a post when, uh, when we were at that event, I need to get on the horse. <laughs> you haven't made one since? No, but I've got some good pictures I should use. Yeah. Uh, Private jet. Come on, man. <laughs> got to put it up there. Get on the gram gram. Dude, thank you, man. I appreciate you coming on. Everybody watching this, anyone who shared, you rock. Um, and, and Charles, thank you for your time. Thank you for coming on and sharing your, your story and your wisdom, man. You're, you're a smart guy. Well, I really appreciate it. It's uh, been fun getting to know you as well and uh, yeah. pleasure coming on the show. Yeah, man. Thank you. And, and everybody make sure you go follow Charles, check out his website, purejv.com. I have it up on the screen. You all have an awesome day. And Charles, thanks again. I appreciate you coming on, man. My pleasure. See ya. Have a great day, guys.